Life Audio. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And on Facebook, we have a community. You can just look for a Daily Bible Podcast. We have hundreds and hundreds of awesome people in there sharing what God is teaching them, sharing us photos of their visits to the Holy Land, sharing Mm -hmm. graphics and different things that they see in their study Bibles that's helping us all understand the Bible better. In fact, I love this what Diana posted just a few days ago. She said, I have read through the Bible a few times, but with Trisha and Michelle, I'm not only learning more, I'm having fun doing it. I so appreciate the way ideas are presented. You don't pretend to be haughty Bible scholars, and I appreciate that so much. It really is like a group of friends sitting around talking about God and his word. That that's just so that's encouraging awesome. <laughs> because that's that's all we want to do. We mm-hmm. we just want to encourage others to read the word because we know what the word has done in our own lives. Yeah. And so we're just sitting here with this big huge bullhorn going, "Hey, come and join us because we we want to see you grow too. Like so, this is amazing. Yeah. Come and come and read God's word with us. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you, Diana, for for encouraging us uh, this week. Okay, so today we are reading Psalm 75, 76, 77, and 78. And Psalm 75, this is another psalm of Asaph. It's a song that is to be sung to the tune of Do Not Destroy. So I don't know. I, I just, I was like, that just sounds kind of like darkness. Yeah. Do not destroy. Well, do not destroy was also used in some of David's Psalms, of Psalm 57, 58, and 59. Okay. So in the beginning of the Psalm here, we are reminded to give thanks to God. And then we see judgment, which is probably the do not destroy. We see judgment for the wicked. So Take heed and stop using your mouths to bo- boast, which basically mm. I take heed. Just don't use your mouths to like slander or do anything else. Um, the psalmist says, I told the wicked, do not raise your fist. Do not raise your fist in defiance at the heavens or speak such arrogance. And like watching someone just totally bring down the name of God or or acting in defiance like that mm-hmm. does it hurts my heart. So mm-hmm. I can't imagine being someone like Asaph and watching that happen. It had to have just totally hurt his heart. And then we we come down from, at least I felt like the emotion was up a little bit. And then all of a sudden it felt like the emotion came down a little bit um, in humility when he realizes that only God, it is only God who judges, who will rise and fall. And that again, we see, we see a little bit of David where David's, David's like cursing his enemies, but he knows that it's at God's feet where vengeance takes place. And so then Asaph turns and he's like proclaiming what God has done. Oh, so good. Now, Psalm 76 is a hymn of praise and thanksgiving to God. It's acknowledging his power and sovereignty, and the psalmist highlights God's mighty deeds. Now, some believe this was written after the Israelites won a battle. They don't know what battle it was, but this makes it pretty clear. For he breaks the pride of princes, and the kings of the earth fear him. So the Israelites won, and these other nations lost, and so their pride was broken. And then the psalm encourages people to honor and worship God while also serving as a reminder of his ultimate victory over evil and wickedness. So look at, we won this battle, guys, but God is the one that's going to have victory over all Mm -hmm. the evil and all the wickedness. And then in Psalm 77, it starts in this great pain. I cry to you, God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. I just, my, like, my emotions were drawn in right Mm -hmm. away. And 
And we, I found out that the psalm is not particularly tied to any certain time frame. Um, it could have been after a lost battle. It could have been after the death of Dave or after the death of David. Or there's a number of things that have broken our hearts in the last couple of weeks that it could have, this psalm could have been written um, because of those circumstances. But what we see in this psalm is someone who knows pain and who knows this darkness. And the author, of course, is Asaph. And he paints a picture of someone who has gone through deep, deep pain. He pain. He remembers the good old days and now is asking God, have you rejected us? Have you rejected me? Mm. I mean, your unfailing love, it just seems to be gone. Have you forgotten your promises? Yet we know and we see Asaph knows God and he recalls and he writes down God's incredible miracles of the past, starting with, by your strong arm, you've redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. And um, one commentator said, the message of the psalm is that to brood on sorrow is to be broken and disheartened. So kind of like what we were learning with lament last mm-hmm. week, while to see God is to sing on the darkest mm. day. Once we come to know that our years are of his right hand, there is light everywhere. I was like, that is such a good point. Such a good point. Yeah. And I love that this this one isn't written by David. It's written by Asaph. But like there's honesty in here too. It's like that honesty, there's a ripple effect. When David mm-hmm. was honest and other people like, oh, we could write songs about this. Like let's write all these deep emotional songs and share what really we're thinking. Because I know I have har- had dark days where I'm like, God, I was just trying to do what yeah. you wanted me to. And why is this happening? This is so hard. But then I love that quote you said that we need to see that that there's light. He is our light, even in those darkest days, and we can sing to him and have hope in him. Oh, so good. Okay, so Psalm 78 is a teaching song. It's a long one, mm-hmm. and it's a teaching song that tells the story of Israel, focusing on how faithful God was and how disobedient the people were. <laughs> um, so the poet tells the next generation to learn from the past and tell stories of of how God has done amazing things. It says, for he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so that the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. And they in turn will teach their own children. And so teaching this psalm to children actually taught them God's path in history. Like if kids knew how to sing the song, they would yeah. know all about God's plan and how God was faithful and the people did not obey and the God was faithful. So I love that. Like, it's basically like, let's t- just like we teach our kids the ABCs or whatever. We want them to learn something. This was a teaching song. And the psalm shows how patient and kind God is. Even though the Israelites kept breaking their promises, God pick the tribe of Judah and David as a servant. And at the end of the Psalm, it says he's given the chosen people a fresh start. So it's supposed to give hope. And I love that to the generation that's not yet born um, and how we could teach them these things. And I was just looking Mm -hmm. on Facebook, Michelle, the teen moms that I started mentoring in uh, 2002 was our, um, our meeting, our first meetings when I started mentoring teen moms, they were having babies. Now, those babies are having babies. Mm-hmm. Like I just saw Generations. one of the teen moms, her son's uh, girlfriend is having a baby. I'm like, I was there ministering to that mom and now she's going to become a grandma. Like that makes me feel really old, but really cool that children not yet born. If we teach the generation, then there's going to be another generation that in that moment that we're teaching aren't even there yet, that the good news of God can be passed down. Mm-hmm. That's so true and so good. Well, we need to take a break and um, hear from our sponsor. But when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. Hey, Harker Heights. There's a new 7-Eleven in town. Now open at 307 East FM 2410 Road. Find all your favorites like Big Bite Hot Dogs, Pizza, Taquitos, Big Gulps, and Slurpees. Everything you need to get back on the go. Check out what's new with coffee from 7-Eleven. And be sure to grab one of our delicious fresh bakery items, like a cookie or muffin. Visit the new 7-Eleven now open at 307 East FM 2410 Road. 
and download the Seven Rewards app to score free food and drinks. Once in a generation, a podcast comes along with the power and eloquence to inspire us all. This show will entertain you while you wait for that one. Join two best friends, author and former history teacher John Driver and comedian Johnny W. for hilarious and authentic conversations about life, history, culture, faith, and everything in between. You can listen to Talk About That wherever you find your podcasts or at lifeaudio.com. Okay, so the word of the day is unfailing. Mm -hmm. And I've mentioned earlier this week that I had been just sort of camped out on this word unfailing. Mm -hmm. Now, it's always usually it equals or it's it's um, in conjunction with unfailing love. Mm -hmm. But unfailing, it's an adjective. It's without error or fault, without error. I mean, just think about that. When we think about God's unfailing love, it's without error or fault. Like it is pure, unfailing. Unfailing is reliable or constant and unfailing synonyms are dependable, steadfast, steady, sure, and endless. I mean, all those words describe God and all those words describe God's love for us. And um, and so it just seems like unfailing love is just this perfect combination, this perfect combination that, of course, like I said, describes God. And this combo is used 240 times in the Old wow. Testament. I mean, 240 times in the Old Testament, and it's most often it's in the Psalms. And today we see a different side of unfailing love. We see a side of Asaph who is just he's he there's a little bit of fear in him there's a little bit of of i don't know scared scaredness can you say scaredness there there's just can you you're pondering i'm, I'm thinking uh, <laughs> scaredness uh okay, not scaredness we'll just go back to fear let's go back okay, to so fear there's, <laughs> there's this fear to him in asaph in psalm 77 because he is asking god if his unfailing love is gone forever. And that is kind of a heaviness because in the past, when David was talking about God's unfailing love, it's it's this, oh, God, your love goes on forever and ever. It's everlasting. I mean, that we talked about everlasting yesterday. And so when David's talking about this unfailing love, it's forever and ever. And yet today, Asaph is saying, did you take your unfailing love from me? He didn't mm-hmm. say, did you take your love from me? He, it, this is, this has more meaning mm-hmm. to it, more oomph to it. He's like, did you take your unfailing love from me? And is it gone forever? And that's just a heaviness that I don't know. I sat with today as I was reading, cause I was just like, what would that feel like if God took that away? What have I ever felt that? I don't know that I have ever felt that dark Mm -hmm. and lonely. And Asaph obviously was feeling it or he was feeling it for the people. And, um, and so anyway, there was just some heaviness with this unfailing love. And I think it's okay. It just shows us that it's okay to to feel that way. Uh, Mm -hmm. We know the truth is God didn't take his unfailing love away, right? but you can say like, God, in this moment, I feel like you took your unfailing love away. Mm-hmm. And it's in the Bible and it's in the Psalm and it's not like, but we know the God is unfailing love is always there. like it is, it is there, but it's okay to ask these questions to feel this way. Like emotions are emotions um, and that we're going to feel them. And that the fact that people were feeling them thousands of years ago and writing about them makes us realize like this is human and this is like but as long as we keep asking God, like he's actually yeah. turning to God and asking him. Yeah. So he's like looking yeah. to God during mm-hmm. this time. Oh, so good. And when it comes to that unfailing, that one Psalm that just like showed Israel's history through that whole thing that they wanted them to teach their children, this yeah. whole line of what God did, you know, be careful. Or it says, but watch out, be careful never to forget what you have seen. And this is from Deuteronomy four and nine. Do not let these memories escape from your mind as long as you live and be sure to pass them on to your children and get grandchildren. So our children need to know God's faithfulness in the past so that they can trust him in the present. They need mm-hmm. to know what God did so that they can trust him now. And I love that word unfailing. 
Um, again, it's an adjective to describe whether we choose God or not. Like, are we going to believe in his unfailing love? It can be a powerful, constant force in our lives, but only if we choose to accept it. Now, I know in so many of our lives in times of doubt or struggle, we tend to push God away, <laughs> uh, but that's when we need him most. Um, and so we have uh, 10 kids and one of our daughters fights against our love. Um, and I wish I could say my love was unfailing, but I know I have failed at times, but she really pushes against our love. And so she's so sure we're going to reject her that she wants to reject us first. And so, you know, she went and lived with her biological mom after she turned 18, she's there now and we still love her. I still have, you know, gifts for her. I care for her. We text her. She doesn't respond often, um, but she's someone pushing us away. And she's missing out on the relationship that we want to give to her. Um, and so the only way when we when sometimes as she goes through these waves, like sometimes she has nothing to do with us. And then sometimes she's like, I'm so sorry. I miss you guys. But once she does connect with us again, we t- remind her, like, remember the time you did this and we still loved you. Remember the time you did this and we still loved you. Remember the time we did this and we still loved you. And we would to remind her that even in the moment where it seems like in her mind, those emotions are saying, they don't love me. If we can remind her of those times that you did this to us, you said this to us, and we still loved you, we're still there. Um, it just reminds us of our love. And God's love is even greater than that. His is unfailing love. And, and so that's what he does. That's what he does. Totally yeah. for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look what you I did. did this, but I'm here. Yeah. And I still love you. Yeah. And so the takeaway really, I think for all of us is that it's important to share times where God was faithful and that inspires Mm -hmm. trust and that we need to embrace God's sure love. Even when he feels distant, it's not God who's moved. It's us. Like I know, like right now, Lord, I may not feel you, but I know you're there. And then teaching our children, the unfailing unfailing love of God builds that strong foundation that we've been talking about. But just saying it isn't enough. We need to tell the times that God really showed up in our lives, the times Mm -hmm. that he was there for us. And it helps them to believe that God can be there for them too. God did this for me. God was there for me. God has, my kids have heard me tell my testimony of God when I was headed the wrong direction. I turned it over to God. I want them to know so that they can start to trust him in their own lives. You know, in Psalm 143, we find these words, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. And we see someone who is trusting God and seeing his unfailing Mm -hmm. love and understanding what you are talking about, Trisha, like understanding and seeing like you know, they could have been a child who just didn't trust, but now they trust. Mm-hmm. And I just want to read a few verses from some of the major prophets. We haven't gotten there yet, but many of you already have probably read some of the major prophets at some point in your life. But Isaiah 54, verse 10, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken for my covenant of peace or my covenant of peace be removed. And that is what the Lord says, for he has compassion on you. So those Mm -hmm. were the words of God. And then in Jeremiah 31, three, the Lord appeared to us in the past. So Jeremiah is saying this, the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. In Lamentations 3.32, we see, though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. And so that's almost copying a little bit of our psalm. There's some grief. There's some There's some sadness. There's a lot of sadness, but he's going to show compassion mm. and his unfailing love will continue. And then in Hosea 10, verse 12, sow righteousness for yourselves, reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplayed plowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. There we go again with that unfailing love. We have a God who loves us with an everlasting love, with a love that will not fail. It is steady. It's, it's strong and it goes on to eternity. 
Yeah, and I love that part you just read, for it is time to seek the Lord. And so whether you, maybe you are feeling right now that there's so much darkness, like you can't even imagine God being there. Or maybe you're like, everything is going so well in my life. Uh, whatever it is, anywhere in between, it is time to seek the Lord. Whether we're, mm-hmm. it's okay to say like, God, I am having a hard time trusting in your unveiling love right now. Um, you might be there and that's okay. If you turn to him, you could tell him that he's going to be there listening. He wants to have compassion on you. Or if you're saying, God, so many things, so many blessings are happening. Thank you for your unveiling love. Like he'll take either one of those. Um, but we need to praise him. We need to turn to him and we need to thank him and invite him mm. in. Well, he's there. We, he's there, but we just need to, we need to ask him to come and be with us. But Michelle, would you like to pray for us? Yes, I'd be honored. Oh, God, your unfailing love knows no limits, knows no bounds, knows no ends. And Father, just as we've been talking about your unfailing love today and talking through the Psalms and um, learning more about you and learning more about your character and just all that surrounds you, Mm. Father, first of all, I pray that we are all left amazed at who you are and just basking in your glory, basking in who and just you, Um, Father, and then the fact that you come and dwell among your people is just so humbling. Father, there are people today, me, Trisha, and everyone who's listening today, who we're all on different walks. We're all on different sides of the spectrum of your unfailing love or understanding your unfailing love in our lives. And Father, I just pray that um, that today you meet each one of us where we are and that you just reveal more and more of your love to us. Father, I pray that that by the end of the day, we walk away more amazed by who you are and more amazed and assured of your love for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for how you love your children. Thank you for how you love us. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Tomorrow, we are reading Psalm 79, 80, 81, and 82. I want to thank Uh, Life Audio for their partnership with us with Daily Bible Podcast. Go to lifeaudio.com. It's an amazing new Christian audio platform where you can find other podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God. That's lifeaudio.com. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Run the Army's race in person at the Pentagon. Army 10-Miler General Registration is now open. Go to Army10Miler.com to register today. General Registration presented by General Dynamics. Register today at Army10Miler.com.